a standard board, but you could fly, you could climb everywhere, you could do all these awesome things, but, you know, the game's not really too perfect, you know what I'm saying, because beyond me, I mean, I know what I'm looking at, whatever I see, that this game isn't, but every, oh my freaking god, you asshole! This one doesn't make the game perfect. Free and eat clans. I was expecting this. Get over here. Get over here. In Breath of the Wild, you had a immersive span features due with the push of a button. The most common being able to climb nearly any surface, with the nearly being unable to climb the interiors of the Divine Beasts and Shrine Rooms. Other than just climbing, you have every other thing that Link couldn't do in previous games, such as being able to jump and take enemies' weapons. Beyond all these features, it could be times that the game can mess with inexplicable ways to make things not balanced in the game itself, or that it just can't be perfect as far as the game's ratings go. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that the game just doesn't feel perfect without these few simple things that just makes the game way better than it actually should be. Beyond what the general feel of the game is, once you immerse yourself in all of its in 2D and mechanics, can you truly then realize that it could use a better way of playing for even the smallest things that guess wanted to change already? People might think that I'm trying to be Matthew Santoli over here with the way I'm sitting on the camera. But no, this is my own thing, and this is how I'm going to do my videos from now on. Hello everyone, welcome to Ghost Post, and today I'm going to show you my list of the 5 things that everyone wants in Breath of the Wild. So to top it off, in English, this is a list where Breath of the Wild is basically shown as how it is in the message boards, with everything that everyone wants out of the game, everything that everyone wishes was in the game, and everything that everyone wishes changed in the game, for the better or for the worse. No, the better. Come on. Why am I saying the worse? Alright. Let's do this thing! Now before I start my list off, I just want to note that this list is in random order, so any comments regarding which should have gotten to the number one spot won't be necessary, and here we go. Number five was landing on dragons. Ah, the dragons of Hyrule. What well, excited to see when you take a trip to the cliff sides to the vast amount of range throughout? Wouldn't you just love it if you got to land on this thing and virtually ride it? Well, obviously you can't, and the reason being is that these dragons are, for challenge purposes, Elemental! Wow, what a big shocker there! So it basically means that once you get on a dragon, Link gets to have a little ride in the flying torch train! Now sure it is pretty disappointing to see Link get hopped off one of these big guys randomly, but then again it is pretty disappointing to know the fact that you can't actually get on a dragon with it physically hurting Link the same way. Now I basically grabbed all these things on the list from the views of message boards and YouTube comments, but this one Riding on dragons was my own thing. So, if you like Riding on dragons too, then I su- Number 4 is Petting Dogs. Oh my god, guys, where can I start off with this one? Come on. The dogs in Hyrule can be at any of your local stables, providing no other physical purpose in the game other than to lead you to treasure and feed them a few little pieces of meat. But what starts getting into loving said dog is it's adorable, and I mean, freaking adorable idol animation for you guys. I mean, look at these little guys just messing around. I'm sure there's only two types of dogs in this game, but hey, two is better than one. Because two basically means that one is the only dog for most of the time, because the reason it's the only dog in this game. The fact is, though, when this is a dog race, you just didn't know why Nintendo didn't purposely make it where we couldn't just have an action by a push of a button or an idle animation where he's around a dog and you can just pet it. Like seriously man, come on. And yes, according to the internet, this much being a feature is also very relatable to many other players of the game, including the making of comics as well. Number 3 is very limited amounts of rain. Rain, the rain. What can I say about the freaking rain in this game? God damn. I mentioned earlier in the game, Link can climb nearly any surface, with one exception being his run room for the mastery of weather effects, as stated by Game Boy. But that applies to the surface as well, as it can literally be an ambience to any surface that Link climbs, especially the rain. However, and yes, it does have to be a rain. The attention to detail of the rain in the game can truly be a hot wrench for you and Link and the equipment you use in the game cannot do a single thing about it. When it rains in Breath of the Wild, which is like all the damn time, we can only climb a few steps before it slips on the surface and has to fall those a few steps down again. You can try climbing your way up to the surface, and that could work sometimes, depending on the length of the stamina meter and the height of your cliff, but beyond that, I have gotten 
some pretty good luck so far doing that simple trick. Wearing climbing gear can make you climb faster, but it won't save you from the clutches of wind. You can even wait it out on the side of the cliff and wait for the wind to stop for the time during, but that's even more frustrating and you don't have your ocarina in this game to skip the time. In Breath of the Wild, and I don't have to look this up because so many other people know this for a fact, that rain can come up at the most hopeful of times. That said, it is likely to come up whenever I'm skating a huge mountain looking for a location of Korok Seeds. If this is you, then I feel your struggle, brother. Now with thunderstorms, that's a whole other meat. Thunderstorms are the worst for traveling, especially when you have to take up all of your equipment, including those really good metal bows, just for the time being until it passes. If you're hoping to wait and camp during a thunderstorm, just hide behind a bush and wait for those metal shields and motherfuckers who are holding it blow up on Number 2 is Powers and Abilities with Special Armor. This is one of the major, major reasons for an upgrade. Now I know there's not any controversy over this for being so important, but to me it will make the game a whole lot. So if you've gotten to talking to killing the monster mask maker and letting you go to sell it nearby the towns, then you've likely already gotten the dark outfit, which turns you into the oh so kind dark ring from Ocarina. But if you go shrine hunting and basically unlock the infamous barbarian armor, then that's basically as rewarding as the dark outfit. These two furnishings of clothing should not only have the unlockable feel to them, they should also be very special in their own way, not just by appearance. If you read the description in the inventory, they say that they have some special abilities. The dark outfit's contents keep it hidden within the description, saying that Kilwin sees a mysterious evil within it, which should hit at some sort of drastically evil power, while something amazing out of the blue happens to the barbarian armor, saying that it unlocks some sort of inner animal. Now, I did find this point about these two outfits is that obviously they have no sort of special champion like power to them. Basically meaning that they're only used to put clothes on Link. Wow, what a coincidence. Other than that, the Dark Alpha does have one sort of ability, which basically says that you can just sprint faster during the night, and that's okay. But it really is still disappointing to say the least. Sad, but now what was I saying? I was basically saying that, you know, Barbarian Armor would have an inner animal thing, which would kind of be something like Wolf Link. Some wolf link thing connection to the amiibo, but not you actually turning the wolf link. But something that would happen when you wear the barbarian armor with while you have the wolf link amiibo activated and just walk around to a wolf link, something cool happens. Or that the dark outfit would have some sort of symbiote Spider Man feel where it would just take over the link and it would be hard for it to take it off and maybe like a werewolf mode in Skyrim. Something cool like that. I mean, just something awesome, you know. Our minds are like really great with the facts that we think would be great. And lastly, and number one is harder bosses. Oh, and I haven't actually looked too much into this one, but I know it's true beyond what people think of the game. And basically, this actually means that if it's this good, then it should deserve some more spot. I definitely think that if it's in random order or not, it still needs to be at number one spot. I mean, that's how it feels. Alright, so we kind of go back to the basics now. What for the Wild is all about a game where you just bash enemies' heads in. But it's not just the enemies that count. And I'm looking at you, weak ass, tiny ass choo choos. I'm talking about the bosses. And not just any bosses. And I'm not talking about the Ganon bosses. I'm not Ganon at all. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the bosses that count. The bosses that you find in the overworld that aren't even supposed to be in the main story. The ones that you see that are really a challenge when you just walk off, take a walk and all that stuff. Yeah, those bosses. And I'm not talking about the Guardians that we've already dealt with those with their one shot, two shot kill mechanics. But I'm talking about the Hinoxes. The Giants of Hyrule who are supposed to be hard. Ha! Though every boss in the game has to have its certain weak spot along the body, we can't just blame on Newman and his team because that's just Nintendo. They did just a bunch of Mario Gats to 2 with every non cooler boss having a huge red pimple that he's supposed to smash the shit out of, and they did this again in Breath of the Wild with no use of excessively huge mark theories on the part of the body. So that part of it all makes the Hinox almost too easy. The eyeball and bare legs of the Hinox are its weak spots, and that actually doesn't make me confident of kidding it so easily when you actually didn't even do it. And that's why I love fighting the Lion. These huge centaur-like swordsmen, 
are fun as heck to fight with the Lionels being the floor much that they were felt more amazing and ass kicking than ever before. With the Lionels actually feel like I'm fighting a boss that's actually worth my time to kill. Now with the Moldukas, those things can knock the shit out of me, so I don't deal with them. Now with Guardian Scouts and Test of Strength Shrines, I can actually cheat my way through with no problem with Stasis Plus, given how strong they are and the fact that I know their skills so easily, and I don't think it one shot kill my ass quick. But with Lionels, I can throw you us for days. Now I actually wish that almost all enemies were as strong as Guardian Scouts and Lions. Cause whenever you have something like that, and something as good as challenging as that, you know that this game does. And so there you have it. Five things that we as the players want in the rest of the wild. Now I know that there can't only be five things in the rest of the wild, but the change we can clean will make it way better and way worse the experience for the game itself. So, if you think that I've missed something, or something that you've come up with that would make the game way better, then leave a thousand comments, and if I don't get my comments blown up, I might just give that to you if I can just really, really wait. I hope you all loved the video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Also, to all my viewers of the a and and Q in Reflected the Wild, I thank you so much for all the views I've gotten. With plenty of views, as you been big enough to a thousand, it's only been 50 something views, but still, that's good enough for an AD. Because if you start off with one, you can start off with others, then it's going to be better and better for you to like more and stuff. I love it. Thank you so much for all of your support. I know I didn't get too many comments, I know I didn't get too much of that stuff, but hey, it turned out great in the end, so thank you all for very much. I thank all of the viewers and all of the subscribers to stay with me because for all the people who do, this can be bigger changes to my channel. I know this is just one of the main changes I'm doing to my channel that make it better for the better and not better for the worse. So that is going to be great. That is going to be awesome. I'm going to do a lot of better stuff on my channel and I hope you all love it and you all are interested in it so you want to see better stuff on my channel. Better we should get those posts because all this stuff is going better for the YouTube if you fall. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.